What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Fireside Giants. I'm your host, Anthony Rivardo, joined by my co-host, Alex Wilson, and it's time to talk about Xavier McKinney and what the New York Giants should do with him this offseason because he started tweeting yesterday kind of hinting that maybe contract negotiations have begun with him and the front office for the New York Giants, and so we kind of want to just unpack this, dive into it, and discuss why the New York Giants, in my opinion at least, need to re-sign Xavier McKinney versus kind of why some people might feel like it's okay to let him walk. We just want to kind of preview this offseason for McKinney and the Giants because this is one of their biggest decisions that they have to make. I mean, among their biggest decisions, of course, you have Saquon Barkley. Do they extend him or let him walk? Of course, they have to figure out what they're doing at the quarterback position with Daniel Jones. But then after that, you could argue their next biggest decision is Xavier McKinney and whether or not they're going to resign him. There's many reasons why they should. You could argue a few reasons why maybe they don't need to. I think that he's a tremendous leader, though, in the locker room, wore the captain's patch the past couple of seasons, proved to be a true leader in that defensive backfield, uh, and really proved to be one of the Giants' best players this past season. Career high in combined tackles, a few interceptions down the stretch, and really great grades for PFF and everything else. So Xavier McKinney, one of the Giants' marquee impending free agents of the offseason, I think he's going to be somebody that, if he does hit the open market, is going to have a pretty robust market. So that's why I want to discuss why I think the Giants shouldn't even let him hit the open market and should go ahead and extend him. And that's what we're going to dive into in this episode. But before we do so, make sure to leave a like if you do enjoy this episode. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and ring the bell so you don't miss an episode. And comment your thoughts on the topics down below in the comment section. If you're listening to Apple or Spotify, please make sure to leave us a five-star review. Go ahead and follow us on all of our social media channels at Fireside Giants. Without further ado... Alex, before I hand it off to you, I will say I, I posted an edit for Xavier McKinney yesterday on our social media channels. I was really happy about it, really proud of it. It was cool. It was fun. Go check it out at Fireside Giants and go tag Xavier McKinney because I really want to get him on this podcast because I really like Xavier McKinney and I think he and I would be good friends if we got an opportunity to sit down and chat. So tag him, comment at him, do everything you got to do. Let him know that you want to see him on an episode of Fireside Giants. I know you guys love our player interviews, but without further ado, Alex, how are you doing today, my friend? And what are your initial thoughts on kind of Xavier McKinney's comments yesterday on Twitter or X about his uh, kind of contract negotiations? And how are you feeling about his negotiations going into the offseason? Well, I'm doing pretty good. And yes, the video was very, very cool. And, you know, the new con I know he's a big Kanye fan um, of his music. And it was kind of in, in line with the, the video and the music. It was a perfect combination. Hopefully it does get his attention. But look, McKinney, guys, was one of two players. Um, ironically, both of those players, are coincidentally, both those guys were on the Giants, two defenders who played every single snap last season. Um, you know, after the 2023 or 2022 debacle where he, like, broke some fingers, missed some time, McKinney bounced back and played played every single snap of the 2023 season. And a tale as old as time, you know, people will say it, the best av ability is availability. And McKinney was available this past season. And he wasn't just available. You know, he didn't just show that he was durable and can play every single snap. He also played it at a really freaking high level. Um, he was a top five safety, according to PFF, this past season. Um, this is a guy that had his best year. And he made some impact plays. And... We talked about it in a short-form video yesterday, Anthony. And the truth is that if the Giants lose McKinney, their secondary is going to be a liability next year. Book it. If they lose McKinney, their secondary is going to suck. You can't only have Deontay Banks there, man. They're going to have to spend some money to bring a CB2 in. The free agent market for safeties is bad. It's McKinney, Antoine Winfield, and the rest is trash. So you don't want to go down that road of trying to find a a starting free safety who is not only a free safety, by the way, can play in the slot, can play strong safety, can rush the passer from that position. He can do it all for you. And the truth is, is that I was very much on the fence about McKinney going into the season as an extension candidate. And he proved me wrong. He proved to me that he isn't going to make dumb mistakes, you know, like go ATV and break his fingers. You know, he's going to make the right decisions. He's going to play his heart out. He's going to earn what he deserves. And I respect that out of him. He took that adversity, took that challenge, and ran with it. Those are the type of players you want in New York. And by the way, if we're going to let Saquon Barkley walk this offseason, dude, we can't afford to lose another freaking leader. We're losing leaders left and right. We can't afford to lose another guy that can help keep this team together when the going gets tough. This past season, McKinney and Saquon held this team together like glue, in my opinion, because the coaching staff was feuding. Things were going poorly. The losses were mounting. And the Giants did not waver from a locker room perspective. They stepped up, they looked it in the face, and they won a couple damn games down the stretch. And to me, that says a lot about the intangible qualities of some of our 
star players. McKinney has those leadership qualities. He leads this team out on game day. He rallies the troops. You can't afford to lose a young, what, 25, 26-year-old player um, who's in the middle of his prime you know, and, and and deserves to get paid. Look, a lot of people will point to positional value. Can't pay running backs. Can't pay free safeties. Can't pay this. Can't pay that. Well, the thing is, Xavier McKinney is not just a free safety. And Anthony, I think this is where I'll hand it back to you. How versatile is this guy and what type of value does he have? Because it should certainly not be pigeonholed into just being a free safety. He's much more than that. He is a whole lot more than that. I mean, if you look at the stats for Pro Football Focus or if you just look at his box score stats, whatever you want to take a look at, Xavier McKinney is a great tackler. That's one that I have to put to rest because I see a lot of comments on our videos, on our Instagram posts, everything. Just generally speaking, there's this weird narrative from some Giants fans. They keep saying Xavier McKinney can't tackle. I don't know where this comes from. Xavier McKinney has been one of the best tackling safeties in the NFL throughout his his career over the last four seasons. If you want to go by PFF, he had an 89.1 overall tackle grade uh, this past season, which ranked third in the NFL. He only had uh, six missed tackles on the season. He had 116 combined tackles. His missed tackle rate was only 6%. The guy converts 94% of his tackles. That is incredible. That's a really high mark. His grades are really high. His ability to get into the box, stop running backs, stop all that stuff. He is one of the best tackling safeties in the NFL. So I got to put that narrative to rest. I don't understand where it comes from. Maybe he missed a tackle. I think I know that there was that play in week two versus the Cardinals. I think Josh Dobbs scored a touchdown. He kind of ran through McKinney on that one. I mean, listen, he was one on one. Josh Dobbs is a six foot four, you know, big body that ran into him and he fell forward and scored a touchdown. Okay, it happens. You know, that's one play. If you're going to show one play to tell me that Xavier McKinney is not a good tackler, I could show you 116 combined tackling attempts to tell you that he is a good tackler because that's what he did this past season. And he's durable. He played all of the snaps for the Giants defense. That also means he's a great leader and he doesn't take plays off he's always out there and he's always grinding and working so he's very instrumental to the success the success of this defense and if you're asking me how is he versatile I mean the guy lines up everywhere we've seen him line up at that free safety position and get interceptions as a center fielder we've seen him get in the box and play that strong safety role slash linebacker role and we've also seen him line up quite often in the slot as a slot cornerback and play man-to-man coverage with some of the best slot receivers and tight ends in the NFL so Xavier McKinney really does do it all he is the glue that holds together the giant secondary and if you want to take this a step further that's what he was doing in Wink Martindale's defensive scheme now you have a new defensive coordinator coming in here Shane Bowen who runs a multiple front nickel heavy defense which means that he's going to be asking his secondary to do even more than Wink Martindale did so you're going to be asking Xavier McKinney or whichever safety is starting for the Giants next season to hold this defense together so Xavier McKinney has actually become a more important player and a more valuable player to the Giants because they brought in a new defensive coordinator that requires high-level safety play in his defensive scheme. So if the Giants were maybe on the fence about extending Xavier McKinney before the offseason began, now that they've hired Shane Bowen, I have to imagine that extending Xavier McKinney has become a priority for them. Because I think for Shane Bowen in particular, he's looking at this roster and saying, I need a high-level safety in order to make my defense run properly. I mean, you're thinking about the Tennessee Titans defense that had Kevin Bayard, one of the best safeties in the NFL. Yes, obviously they traded him to Philadelphia, but over the past several seasons, that secondary and that defense was so good in large part because they had a lot of talent in that secondary at the safety position. That's what Shane Bowen's going to be looking for. So he's going to say to the Giants front office, he's going to say, hey, Joe Shane, I know that you make the decisions here, but I need Xavier McKinney in this lineup. Like, I need a really high-level safety. And a lot of Giants fans kind of push this narrative that safeties are a dime a dozen. You don't pay them. You can find them in the draft. Guys, the Giants have drafted several safeties over the last several years. None of them have come close to being what Xavier McKinney is. And that's kind of just my overarching theme here. Giants fans seem really content with letting good players walk out of the door. And I don't understand why, because the Giants don't have enough good players on this roster to let good players walk out of the door. This is a bad football team. There is not a lot of talent here. The good players that the Giants have, 
those are the players that they need to keep and they need to pay. They're not paying a ton of great players because they don't have a ton of great players. The main contracts that they've handed out, Andrew Thomas is a great player. Dexter Lawrence is a great player. Daniel Jones is open for debate, which is what I'm going to say to put it in the kindly. And then outside of that, who have they paid? Who, who do they even have on this roster worth paying? I mean, yeah, Saquon Barkley, obviously that discussion is going to happen this offseason. But Xavier McKinney is one of the five best players on this team. You don't let one of your five best players just walk away in free agency because you want to play this numbers game and determine that safeties aren't worth this X amount of money. Xavier McKinney is more than just a safety. He does a lot as a leader. He does a lot as a linebacker, as a cornerback, and as a safety. And again, I just don't understand why Giants fans are so content with letting good players go. If you're worried about you know, maybe you want to reallocate this funding into the offensive line or into the defensive line, you still need to find the safety. So you're going to basically ask a guy like Jason Pinnock to do what Xavier McKinney does? Guys, I like Jason Pinnock a lot. I think he's a great player. He's not Xavier McKinney. He doesn't have the abilities, the athletic abilities, and the football abilities that Xavier McKinney has. Xavier McKinney is a top 10 safety in the NFL. Now, that obviously brings up uh, the larger discussion about what's his contract going to look like, and this is where some fans are going to be hesitant to pay Xavier McKinney. I'm not because I think he's worth a top five salary, but some fans might not feel that way. A top five salary, Alex, will net him $16 million per season on average annually. It's a pretty high number, but I do remember a couple seasons ago, a couple off seasons ago, there were Giants fans saying that Saquon Barkley was worth that wage, and running backs are definitely not valued as highly as safeties. So if you ever felt like Saquon Barkley was worth $16 million per year, how do you not feel like Xavier McKinney is worth $16 million per year? I mean, I think that Xavier McKinney, at this, at this stage of McKinney's career, versus this current stage of Saquon Barkley's career, they're pretty neck and neck in terms of where they are at their position group. I mean, Saquon Barkley is a fringe top 10 running back in the NFL, and you could argue Xavier McKinney is a fringe top 10 safety in the NFL. Only difference is that there are 64 starting safeties in the NFL and only 32 starting running backs. So think about how much of a difference that makes in terms of the value of what Xavier McKinney is providing to this team. But Alex, now I do want to have that kind of discussion about that contractual value because I've made my stance clear. Xavier McKinney is one of this team's best players. You do not let him go. You got to have a good player. You got to retain your good players, right? But at that $16 million price point, some people disagree with me. If that is the price point that the Giants and McKinney settle on, how do you feel about it? Because if you're looking at the top five salaries for safeties, the the fifth highest paid is 16. So if he wants to be in that top five, 16 million per year is the price tag. What are your thoughts on that exact price tag? Well, listen, <clears throat> I think that there's a easy way to justify it. And the easiest way to point is if the Giants are paying rookie contracts, rookie money at cornerback, they can afford to pay their safety, right? It's about allocation of assets. And the truth is the Giants have in the past improperly allocated assets to positions that do not produce wins. Um, and that's kind of the reality of their financial allotment. Now, looking at the current rate, they've invested in key positions that do actually provide the value that they're looking for. And this equation stands true. Left tackle, interior pass rush. Dexter Lawrence is a, is a super freak talent. Like you, Normally, you're not going to pay interior defensive linemen that level unless you're Aaron Donald or Dexter Lawrence or you know uh, Simmons or, or you know Jeffrey Simmons or one of those top like pass rushing interior linemen. Those are the guys you pay. Um, you pay C cornerback ones. You pay CB ones. Fortunately, the Giants have theirs on a rookie deal for the next four years. So you know they have key positions already locked up, and some of them at cheaper price points. We estimate they're going to go and get a new quarterback at some point and get rid of the Daniel Jones contract. It doesn't seem like they're paying Saquon Barkley, so you have to say to yourself, all right, well, where do we take that money? Uh, <clears throat> across their offensive line, they have rookie deals. Hopefully, Evan Neal can make an impact. We know John Michael Schmitz is starting. you still got some young talent there developing. Um, we'll see how it kind of grows from here. But I think that in the secondary as a whole – you have basically no money invested there. You have Cordell Flott at, at slot cornerback. Um, you have Jason Pinnock, who is dirt cheap at, at strong safety. Deontay Banks on a rookie contract. Trey Hawkins is there. You're probably going to bring in a CB2. And by the way, this CB2 free agency class is so freaking deep, the Giants can probably get a good player at a very reasonable cost. And then you look at <clears throat> you know free safety. 
And that's the only position you're paying really legitimate money out of all of those players. So at some point, you got to spend some money somewhere in the secondary. If you're going to do it, why don't you give it to a guy, one of the best tackling safeties in the game? Obviously, McKinney is a player, you know, that can be moved into the slot, moved into strong safety, rush the passer. He can do all of the stuff that you need to have, you know, a, a defense that produces turnovers, and is competent in a myriad of facets. Um, I do believe that McKinney is a is a catalyst. He's a leader, someone you want on this team, someone that you can utilize. And God bless Shane Bowen if we, if we say to him, yeah, by the way, good luck next year without our star defensive safety. You know what I mean? Like, you're really going to do that to your new defensive coordinator? You're going to take his best secondary piece away um, and then replace it with, what, a draft pick? Like, you know, it's not it's not sustainable. The Giants are not going to have a good defense next year if they do not bring back McKinney. That's my – that's maybe my – I think that's a fair take, to be honest. Not even a hot take. I think that's a fair take. Their, big, their defense is going to be very suspect without McKinney because, you know, how are you going to survive against teams that air the ball out? How are you going to survive against teams that attack that position because now it's a weakness or you have rookie inexperience there? Um, you know, some teams find a lot of value. Guys like Brian Branch, you know, the Lions got him in the second round um, and he was a star, but like it's rare you come across a guy that can be an instant impact player in year one. Um, McKinney has been developing, he's durable. You know, in terms of last year, he proved to be healthy and he does everything for this defense that you need him to. Like, those are the type of guys you pay. You know what I mean? Those are the type of guys you extend. You don't extend guys that are inconsistent, have health issues. Like, this is this is an easy one for the Giants. You know what I mean? You can open up money by restructuring Dexter Lawrence's contract, Andrew Thomas's contract. You can prepare for the inevitable that Daniel Jones is going to be released after next season unless he has a ridiculous 2024 season, which is probably unlikely. Giants have money. They're going to be turning positions over. And they're going to have to – they're going to open up – especially if they end up with a rookie quarterback on a rookie deal, they can afford to pay McKinney, in my opinion, long term. Yeah, and another reason why they can't afford to pay him is because they have so much money open in these uh, upcoming seasons. I mean, they only have a tight salary cap space, and it's arguably tight this offseason. We talked a few episodes ago, Alex, about how they can bring their salary cap number up to 60 to $80 million this offseason if they really want to. So $60 million to spend this offseason, yes, they can afford to sign Xavier McKinney on a backloaded contract with a cap hit this year of $10 million. It's not a whole lot. I mean, if you backload the deal and you're paying him 16 on average annually, you can easily give him a $10 million cap hit in 2024, make his 2020, I don't know, seven cap hit, 20 million and afford it. Because by then the salary cap will have probably risen by $20 million. So you can almost kind of say that it it, it cancels out what Xavier McKinney's um, wage is at that point because of inflation and new TV deals in the NFL and all that kind of stuff. So Xavier McKinney on a $60 million per year deal at this point may sound like a lot to some fans, but if they structure it accordingly and they only give him certain amounts of guaranteed money, they can absolutely make that deal affordable on the salary cap hit and have zero real negative effects on their team this year, next year, and the year prior. So I'm all in on paying Xavier McKinney. I think that he is super important to this team. Again, I keep coming back to the idea that the Giants let a lot of good players go. They don't have a lot of good players. I don't know why you would want them to just let one of their best players walk away in free agency. You got to keep the talent that you have. And that's probably the same argument that I will make when we talk about Saquon Barkley. Now, I've been very 50-50 on Saquon Barkley. I've kind of gone back and forth. Do I want him on this team? Do I want him to go? But I think at the end of the day, once I really think about it, I'll probably come around and say, why let a talented player walk away for nothing? Uh, that's going to be my argument for Xavier McKinney, probably for Saquon Barkley as well. We'll have that conversation later in the offseason, so stay tuned to Fireside Giants for that. But really, my closing thoughts here, Xavier McKinney, he's still young, he's durable, he's a great leader, and he's a great player. All of those traits, the traits that uh, Brian Dable always preaches, what is it, smart, dependable, versatile, tough, all those things. I mean, Xavier McKinney is all of those things, guys. He is exactly what this team is looking for in a football player, and he plays the game at a very high level and has every single season of his career. So for me, Xavier McKinney, got to lock him in, got to re-sign him. He is one of your cornerstone pieces, a building block for the future. Do you guys not forget? I mean, we've talked a lot about the success of Daniel Jones in that playoff game last year versus the Minnesota Vikings, how that helped him get paid. Do you guys remember who made the game-winning tackle on fourth down? It was Xavier McKinney. So Xavier McKinney was a huge part of the success. He almost had an interception in that game as well. I remember it was a deep ball against Justin Jefferson. 
where Jefferson got away with an OPI. He was on lock, though. Justin Jefferson was on lock, and we gave a lot of credit to Adoree Jackson, but a lot of that also had to go to the safety help over the top from Xavier McKinney. Xavier McKinney was locking down Justin Jefferson and helped the Giants' defense succeed in that game. So I just think he's super important to this team. He's one of our best players, and going forward, the Giants need to retain their best players and not just let them walk away for nothing. So Xavier McKinney, I'm hoping that he gets that deal done. I'm hoping that he joins us on an episode of Fireside Giants really soon. Um, so make sure to go ahead and tag him and all that stuff and tell him that you guys want to hear him do an interview with us. I know you guys love the Bobby Okereke interview and every other interview that we've done. We want to do more of them, but now we got to ask upon you, loyal viewers, to help us out here and reach out to some of these players and uh, campaign for them to appear on Fireside Giants. But those are my thoughts on Xavier McKinney, man. I'm so excited to see everybody else's thoughts down below in the comment section, whether you agree or disagree. Open to all your opinions, because at the end of the day, that's all it is, is an opinion. I'm not speaking facts. I'm speaking opinions. So let me hear it down below. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this episode. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Ring the bell so you don't miss an episode. Comment your thoughts down below in the comment section. If you're listening to Apple or Spotify, please make sure to leave us a five-star review. Go ahead and follow us on all of our social media channels at Fireside Giants. But without further ado, we'll catch you all in the next one. Have a good one, and let's go Giants.